So thanks, uh, uh, John, uh, for agreeing to present your work. Like I said before, you know, the work coming from uh, the Oizumi lab has been really interesting to us. We've been studying a few of the papers and when this came out, it looked really interesting and I read it and uh, found the ideas really, uh, really cool. So it's a real pleasure to have you present to us and uh, looking forward to it. So thanks, John. Over to you. Uh, thank you, Ben, for your kind introduction. Uh, I'm Jun Tazano from uh, Oizum Sound Lab in the University of Tokyo. And first of all, I'd like to thank the organizers for giving me this opportunity. And I'm excited to share our study on this very open platform, Worldwide Neuro. And thank you all for coming today. And today, I'd like to talk about our recent preprint, bidirectionally, bidirectionally connected cores in a mass connectome toward identifying the brain subnetworks essential for consciousness. So let me start from highlight of our study. Uh, based on ample empirical evidence, it has been suggested that bidirectional interaction among brain areas is essential for consciousness. Uh, based on this thought, uh, we propose a novel method for extracting network cores with strong bidirectional connections. Uh, here is a kind of schematic of our method. Uh, if we apply our method to this kind of network, we can extract cores like this. And in this example, uh, this orange area is uh, extracted as uh, most strongly bidirectionally connected cores and light blue area is extracted as uh, second, the network core with the, strong, the, with the second strongest bidirectional connections. And then we applied this proposed method to a whole brain mass connectome. And we found that the cores with the strongest bidirectional connections consisted of regions presumably essential for consciousness, such as isocortical and ceramic areas and the classroom. And contrarily, we could not find such correspondence between the cores and consciousness when we applied other simple methods like k core decomposition, which ignored bidirectionality. So in our study, uh, we show that um, by considering bidirectionality is a key to relate brain areas to consciousness. Okay, uh, let's move to the main part of, uh, of today's talk. Um, in which areas in the brain does our consciousness arise? Uh, this is one of the biggest questions in neuroscience. In tackling this question, an important notion to note is that bidirectional processing or in other words, recurrent processing. In previous studies, it's been suggested that bidirectional interaction like this uh, among brain areas is essential to consciousness rather than this kind of simple unidirectional interaction. For example, previous studies examining visual perception have shown that conscious perception does not arise when there is only feedback process, whereas it arises when there is feedback as well as feedback process. In addition, the feedback component disappears not only during the loss of specific contents of consciousness in awake states, but also during unconscious states where consciousness experiences are generally lost such as general anesthesia, sleep, and vegetative states. The importance of this kind of bidirectional processing is suggested independent of sensory modalities like vision or auditory processing or somatosensory processing, and species from human, monkey, rodents, birds, and even fruit flies. And figure on the right hand side is more naive example uh, that give us an intuition that bidirectional interaction is essential for consciousness. For example, the retina is not considered to be part of the place of consciousness. I mean, the retina is kind of, is not essential for consciousness. And the retina, retina is purely feed forwardly connected to the brain. Retina is uh, at the up upstream or to the brain. And the same is true for the motor nerve or muscles. Motor nerve or muscles are at the 
feed forward to the brain and it's downstream to the brain. And these kind of feed forward, purely feed forward connected part, uh, so to be irrelevant for consciousness, not essential for consciousness. Based on these findings and uh, intuition, uh, previous studies hypothesized that the subnetworks in the brain supporting consciousness should be bidirectionally connected. Thus, evaluating which subnetworks in the brain are bidirectionally connected and how strongly is an important step in identifying the region essential for consciousness. In this study, we propose a method for extracting network cores in which elements are strongly bidirectionally connected. We call such network cores complexes. This term and concept uh, originate from uh, integrated information theory. And although the specific definition of complexes differs in the original theory. And let's consider a network shown on the left side again, and the nodes B, A, F, I, J uh, bidirectionally connected, while the nodes A, C, D, G, H uh, feed forward connected, uh, which might be afferent or efferent areas like retina or motor nerve. And if we apply the proper method to this network, we can extract network cores from this uh, network cores complexes from this network, which are shown by color shading like this. And the subnetwork EFIJ, which is shown in orange, is a complex with the strongest bidirectional connections. And the subnetwork BEFIJ is a complex with the second strongest bidirectional connections. Oh, sorry. And also we can see that uh, entire network as in the entire network, the st strength of financial connection is equal, equal to zero. Uh, okay, like this, we can uh, extract network cores from network and we can decompose a network uh, using the such cores hierarchically like this. Okay, then let me introduce the definition of complexes. And the following four or five pages are a little bit uh, complicated. I mean, the definition of complex, the complexes is a bit uh, complicated, but I'll try to make it uh, intuitive as far as I can. So um, please, uh, if you have any question, or question please interact in any time. Any time. And ah, uh, yeah, so it's it. And um, okay, intuitively speaking, a complex is a subnetwork in which nodes are strongly bidirectionally connected and hence um, inseparable. A complex is a subnetwork whose parts are strongly connected to each other in a bidirectional manner. And in other words, a complex cannot be cut into two parts without losing many strong edges, no matter how it is cut. Okay. To define complexes, we first need to introduce two important comp concepts. Uh, the first one is graph cut, which is used for measuring strength of bidirectional connections. And using this graph cut, um, we measure inseparability of our subnetwork uh, by uh, concept minimum cut. And we then uh, we can then define complexes. So now first let me explain about the graph cut. Okay, graph, we use a uh, concept of graph cut for measuring strengths of bidirectional connections. Specifically, uh, we take the minimum value of the sum of the weights of connections going from one part to the other and that in the opposite direction. Um, it takes large value when connections are bidirectional and small value when connections are unidirectional. So for example, let us consider this simple network consisting of, consisting of four nodes. Uh, we, we consider, uh, we want to measure the strength of bidirectional connections between A, B, and C, D. 
Uh, to do so, we take the minimum of the value of uh, minimum of the sum of the weights in one direction and the opposite direction. In this case, there's a connection from AB to CD. Uh, there are two connections uh, whose weights are three and one. So the connection strength from AB to CD is uh, three plus one and four. But in contrast, in contrast, there's no connection from CD to AB. So the connection strength from CD to AB is uh, CD to AB equals to zero. By taking taking minimum of four and zero, uh, we define the strength of bidirectional connection between AB and CD equals to zero. Okay, then let us consider another example in show, showing C. In this case, because there is a bidirectional connection between AB and CD, so if we take the even if we take the minimum of two and two, um, then the value becomes two. So in this case, the strength of bidirectional connection is two. So like, like this, by using this measure, uh, which takes mi the minimum value of the sum of the weights of connections in two directions, we can measure the strength of bidirectional connections. If the connection is bidirectional, the value becomes large. And if the connection is unidirectional like this, the connection will be small or equal to, equal to, equal to zero. OK, then using this measure of strength of bidirectional connections, uh, we uh, consider minimum cut for measuring inseparability of a network. Okay, uh, as I mentioned, a complex is a subnetwork whose parts are strongly connected to each other in a bidirectional manner. And the complex cannot be cut into two parts without losing many strong edges, no matter how it is cut. So a complex is, in other words, an inseparable network, subnetwork. To measure such inseparability of a subnetwork, we consider the bipartition of the network for which the strength of bidirectional connections is minimum among those for all possible bipartitions, which we call a minimum cut or a mean cut. Uh, let us consider a graph that consists of two groups, AB and CD, like this. And in this network, Within each group, the nodes are bidirectionally, bidirectionally connected. However, um, there's no connection between AB and CD. So in that sense, this graph as a whole is not bidirectionally connected. To appropriately evaluate the lack of such bidirectional connection in this network as a whole, the graph must be cut into AB and CD. Then the graph cut, uh, the strength of bidirectional connection becomes zero, like this. On the other hand, if we cut this graph differently, like this, the strength of bidirectional connection between AC and BD becomes non zero. So to evaluate the inseparability of a network as a whole, we must find the bipartition that uh, gives the minimum of the strengths of bidirectional connections among all possible cuts, which we call. And we call such uh, bipartition uh, minimum cut or mean cut. And uh, also we represent the uh, strengths of bidirectional connections for minimum cut as double MC like this. And next then let us consider another example showing on right. And in this case, all the four nodes, ABCD are kind of strongly bidirectionally connected. And in this case, minimum cut for this network is like this. And the weight for our uh, strength for, of bidirectional connection for this minimum cut equals to two. So compared to the case in A, minimum cut value is larger. So 
uh, zero and two. So by using this, uh, by using strength of variational connection for minimum cut, we can measure inseparability of a network. In this case, network is easy to separate. And in this case, the network is more inseparable. Then now we are ready to define complexes. John, can I ask a question just very yeah, quickly? Sure. Yeah. Do you have a constraint that every edge must be positively valued or zero? Can, so could you could you have a sort of a negative edge? And, and if so, how would you work out whether or not think, that was I, part of the complex? Thank you for the question. And the, it must be zero or non-negative. Yeah. So we cannot consider negative weights. Does this make sense? Yep, that, no, that's great. That, that was my intuition. I just wanted to make sure I was following. Great, thank you. Yeah. OK, so now let me def introduce the definition of complexes. OK, and a complex is a subnetwork which is more strongly, more inseparable than larger subnetworks like this. Uh, in this case, uh, the subnetwork EFIJ is uh, complex because the inseparability for EFIJ, which is measured by uh, minimum cut, is larger than BFIJ or DHEFIJ. A, E, F, G, H, I, J, and so on. So like this, a uh, complex is more inseparable subnetwork than larger subnetwork that contain it. And using this complex, we can uh, decompose a network hierarchically like this. And in this case, uh, the subnetwork BEFIJ is more inseparable than the entire network. And the subnetwork EFIJ is more inseparable than BEFIJ and ACDG than the entire sorry, than, than the entire network. Okay. So this is a definition of network words complexes. Okay, now we have defined the network core complexes, but here is a problem. Maybe you already noticed that, but that is uh, searching for complexes is uh, computationally demanding because it requires require solving two computational optimization problems. First one is for finding minimum cut, and the second one is for finding uh, complexity using minimum cuts for all the subnetworks. And if we search for complexes by brute force method, the computation time increases exponentially with the number of networks with the network size. And to resolve the problem, uh, in recent studies, we have developed a fast and exact algorithm, algorithm based on two mathematical properties, submodularity and monotonicity. And by utilizing these two mathematical properties, we can find complexes very efficiently and exactly without no approximation. And the algorithm for searching for complex is quite simple. Uh, what we need to do, what we need to do is just hierarchically divide a network by minimum cuts like this. We first find the, the minimum cut of the network and then divide the network into two parts at the minimum cut and then again find the minimum cut for this small small sub network and also for this network and repeat this process until the entire network is decomposed into single elements. What we need to do is just like this. And because of this simplicity of the algorithm, the computational time is decreased from exponential order to polynomial, polynomial order. 
And we can now find extract complexes even from network consisting of consisting of like several thousand of elements. And this speeding up enables us for extracting complexes from a large brain network like mass connectome, which is a network consisting of about 400 elements. Okay, then uh, we apply the method to a mesoscale whole brain mass connectome. And this connectome is from Allen Mass Brain Connectivity Atlas. And this uh, mass connectome is a network, structural network consisting of uh, about 400 nodes in total and 200 nodes in each hemisphere. And this is a directed and weighted network like this. And that connection, this is a connection matrix. And uh, each entry of this connection matrix is, uh, in this matrix indicates the connection weight from one brain area to another brain area. And uh, there are 400, about this connection matrix is 400 by 400 matrix. And each uh, brain region is uh, classified into major regions such as isocortex, olfactory areas, hippocampal formation, or thalamus, and cerebellar cortex, or something like that. And we applied the proposed method to this network and investigated which regions compose network cores complexes with strong biosphere connections. Okay, before moving to the result of the analysis, uh, let me explain the way to visualize the structure of extracted course complexes. Uh, because the uh, mass connectome consists of about 400 regions, it is difficult to visualize it uh, using a network, dia network dia diagram like this. So instead of using network diagram, we uh, utilize uh, connection metrics to visualize structure of complexes. Um, here's a connection matrix for this network here, and the rows correspond to source and crumbs correspond to, correspond to target area, uh, target nodes, and each entry indicates the strength of connection from, for example, here is connection from E to A. And we can visualize the structure of this kind of complexes uh, using by sorting rows and columns of this uh, connection matrix. So that the uh, rows and columns corresponding to the nodes in the same complexes are uh, close to each other. For example, this um, orange uh, square area corresponds to this um, complex. And this uh, square area with light blue color corresponds to this second strongest complex. Like this, by sorting rows and columns of connection matrix, we can visualize uh, structure of complexes. So we, we use this kind of figure in, in the next pages, in the following pages. And also, um, Uh, we use uh, a measure coarseness to for investigating the structure of complexes. Uh, coarseness is uh, so uh, we define coarseness of the node V as KV if node V is included in a complex with uh, WMC equals to KV, and but not included in any complex with WMC which is uh, greater than KV. And the corners value becomes large when the node is included in a complex with a high WMC. And the corners values correspond to the color of the nodes in this figure, uh, or in the same way to the color of the diagonal elements of the sorted connection matrix. Uh, in this case, uh, 
the coinage values for EF node, the node EFIJ is equal to uh, node uh, equals to four. And this corresponds to the color here. And the coinage values for node, the node B equals to two. And that corresponds to the color here, diagonal elements, or the, in the same way, color of this schematic. Okay, now we are ready to see the results of mass connectome analysis. Um, here is the result, and we sorted the uh, rows and columns of, of this connection matrix according to the structure of the complexes. And here the color indicate the uh, minimum cut weight, WMC, a string of Bidirectional connections for minimum cut. And here you can see the square area with yellowed color. And this is a most strongly bidirectional connected cores. And these orange square areas correspond to the second or subsequent net complexes with second or third or fourth strong, strongest positional connections. And here is a zoom in view of brain, uh, major, major brain regions. And we can see that uh, the complex with strongest bidirectional connection consists only of isocortical areas. And, and the second and third and fourth and subsequent complexes consisting of not only isocortical areas and also thermocortical areas and also claustrum. But anyway, uh, we can see that. Uh, do, you, do you know which, yeah. which, which nuclei within the thalamus were with, uh, within that grouping? Yeah, yeah, I will tell you, oh, thank you. Sorry. later. Yeah, yeah, thank you. And okay, to see the, and anyway, um, what we can see from this figure is that the complexes with a strong bidirectional connection is mainly consisting of isocortical areas and ceramic areas, or and they do not include like cerebral cortex and cerebral nuclei. To see this difference among major brain regions, uh, we plotted coinless values for each major brain regions in this figure. Uh, we can see that uh, coinless values for many isocortical areas are, are large, and also for some thermic areas, the coinless values are large. And, in, and also, these points are these points correspond to clustering. Uh, I will explain what what is clustering later, but um, also the clustering have high quartz value. But in contracts, uh, brain areas in cerebellum takes small value of quartz. This means that the complexes with the strongest uh, bidirectional connections mainly consisted of regions, presume, uh, and isocortical ceramic areas, and, some like, and also classroom, and which are thought to be essential for consciousness. And the cores with the strongest bidirectional connection did not include regions, uh, cerebrum, and which suggested to be irrelevant to consciousness. And for example, um, isocortex usually most uh, often rated associated with consciousness. And also, uh, recent paper suggested that um, cortical cortical interaction among brain areas is uh, essential for contents of consciousness. And also um, isocortic, not cortex and loop between isocortic cortical areas and thermic areas is uh, essential for states of consciousness. Thus um, isocortical and thermic areas considered to be essential for consciousness. And interestingly, um, as I mentioned, uh, the classroom in the cortical subplate 
takes large quantity value, which means cross sum, the cross sum is included in the complex with strong by strong connection. And the cross sum is uh, has long been uh, thought to be essential for consciousness. For example, uh, Francis Crick said that classroom is a seat of consciousness and the conductor that orchestrates the brain. And also in recent studies, it is suggested that classroom is involved in the control of arousal and sleep levels. And also classroom is uh, su suggested to be uh, involved in saliency control. And another interesting point of this result is that uh, areas that uh, suggested to be irrelevant to consciousness have low quantity value. For example, cerebellum uh, takes very small value. And it, it has been suggested that uh, it, in previous clinical study, it's shown that regions of the cerebellum do not much affect conscious experience, even though it has far more neurons than the cerebellum cortex and is densely connected to the rest of the brain. So these results indicate that the core complexes with the strongest bidimensional connections consisted, consisted of regions presumably essential to consciousness and did not include regions presumably irrelevant to consciousness. Okay, then, um, Finally, uh, to, uh, then next to test whether or not the uh, bidirectionality is important for the results, we checked what if we do not consider bidirectionality. That is, we compare the result with the case where bidirectionality is not considered, ignored. Uh, to do so, we replace the measure for uh, strings of bidirectional connections like just from to this simple measure, this is ignores, this which ignores by the uh, That is, we take the mean of the connection between two parts. So in this case, uh, of course, we take the mean of the connection in two directions. We do not, uh, this, the value, uh, is independent of direction. So even if, even in the case when the connection is unidirectional, this value takes, can take large value. So in this case, only the weight of the connection matters and the direction of connection doesn't matter. And replacing the measure for, measure from this bidirectional one to undirected one, is equivalent to uh, omitting the direction of the connection in this network and consider the network as a unit undirected network. And again, in this, by doing the, like this, uh, the direction of the connection doesn't matter, and we, and, but only weight of the connections matter, so we can ignore bidirectionality. And comparing these two conditions, we can assess whether really by considering bidirectionality as important or not. Okay, again to- uh, Jordan, real yeah. quick, it, it looks like you might have a question um, yeah. from now. Now, do you wanna ask your question? Yeah, sure. Yeah, uh, can I ask a question? So uh, uh, really quickly for about the anatomical boundary of the you know, mouse cortex, is it, to some extent defined because of the bidirectional kind of connections. I, I'm asking this because, you know, the moment that you are starting to talk about the cerebellum, I, I'm not really an expert of the mouse cerebellum or, you know, mouse cortex or anything, but it seems like uh, the number of the neurons in the cerebellum is much, much higher, right? Even in mouse. Yeah. But the number think, of yeah. the nuclei you showed in cerebellum is much smaller. So yeah, that's uh... Yes, uh, right. So that 
kind of suggests to me that, you know, maybe the people who have already labeled this as cerebellar cortex or cerebellar nuclei in different parts already kind of, you know, macro, you know, or yeah, yeah, yeah. compartmentalize, you know, the subset of the, you know, uh, networks that are already, you know, connected as one. And then to have a relatively minimum kind of connection, bidirectional connectivity to the other areas. It's almost like, uh... you know, intuitive labeling of this thing. So I'm not saying that what you're doing is, you know, wrong or anything, but, you know, it is potentially, you know, coming from the way that people label these, you know, areas. Uh, okay, I answered what you mean. And uh, actually, I'm also not specialist of mass anatomy, but I, I, actually, I don't understand how they divide yeah. and pass rate. Maybe uh, this is a bit tricky kind of question, so I'll just wait until the end, and then we can probably come back to discuss about this potential issue. Okay, thank you. Right. And the the other clarification question is that uh, you talk about the strength of the yeah. anatomy, and uh, yes, I, I might have asked you before, but uh, this is theory defined by the number of the connections in terms of axons, right? It's not really nothing to do with the you know, actual physiological strengths of the effects no, no. or yeah. yeah so number of fibers and also the uh what the si si size and so number and the size of that fiber okay all right yeah yeah so that means that the lgn to v1 is probably much we smaller than the v1 to lgn because v1 to lgn it seems to be like you know connected 10 times more Although, you know, the effect of that uh, connection seems much, uh, much weaker. Yeah, yeah, so yeah, so, so yeah, as you pointed out, point, so yeah, we only consider the structure. So we, so this result may be, if we analyze some, some function network, some activity, maybe the result in a way, then the results might be very different. But okay, all at right. this moment, we are not sure. Yeah. Okay, great, all right. Thank you. Mm -hmm. uh, okay, so again, before diving into the result of mass connectome, let me explain this simple example, how results can be defined. So how can results change if we ignore bidirectionality? So left-hand figures in left-hand side, uh, the figures I show you before, and right hand panels are uh, the case when bidirectionality is ignored. So the if we ignore bidirectionality, let's all become something like this, and the extracted core complexes become like this. And in this case, again, I said before, uh, connection direction of the connection does not matter, and only the weight of connection do matter does matter. So, and you can see that the uh, extracted complex, complexes are quite different from this one. And in this case, the complex with the strongest connection consisting of not only EFIJ, but also CDGH. Uh, this is because that um, CDGH are uh, feed forwardly connected, but the strengths of the connection are strong. So in this case, because CDGH, uh, uh, in the left-hand case, the CDGH are feedwardly connected, so unidirectionally connected, so they are not included in the complex with the strongest bidirectional connections. But in the in this case, when bidirectionality is ignored because the connection is, is strong, so they are included in the complex, com the complex with the strongest connections. And you can see the difference also in this uh, sorted connection matrix and coherence values. And the coherence values are large for not only EFIJ, but also for CGTH like this. Okay, now we did the same thing for mass connectome. And here is the result. And we can see that uh, the right panel shows the uh, result when 
by the functionality is ignored. And here is a zoom in view of brain uh, regions, including the strongest complexes. And we can see that these complexes do not necessarily consisting of uh, isocortical or salomic areas, but consisting of many major brain regions. And we can see the difference from also using uh, coherence values. And you can see that there's little difference among major brain regions. You can see that uh, like did, uh, some, okay, the maximum value for, of coherence value for each major brain re regions are almost, almost the same for many major brain regions. And like even some several brain regions in several nuclei take large body. And you can see that there's little difference among brain regions. So this means that um, uh, if we ignore binationality of connections, uh, we cannot see uh, this kind of difference among brain major regions, and we cannot see a good correspondence uh, between complex stru structure of complexes and consciousness. I mean, the, this result indicates that by considering binationality is a key that characterizes the areas that have been associated with consciousness. Okay, then uh, finally, uh, we compare the extracted complexes with some existing measures for network analysis. Some of you may get, think that maybe um, com extracted complexes just a kind of assemble of high degree nodes. And To, to test that, to test that, we compared coherence values with a degree of nodes. Um, here we de define the degree of nodes as just the sum of the weight of edges uh, connecting to a target or source nodes. And we can see that the coherence values for the complexes when bilinearity is considered is. Um, and the degree uh, only weakly correlated. Many brain regions with high coherence values have low degree. So this means that uh, brain areas included in complexes with strong bidirectional connection do not necessarily have high degree. In contrast, the coherence for the complexes when bidirectionality is ignored and degree uh, very strongly correlated, um, especially around the lower degree range. Uh, anyway, um, this line is the identity line. So if the points are on this identity, identity line, the degree and coins values are equal to each other. Um, yes, uh, these results indicate that the consideration of binationality the protoload method enables us to extract core structures that cannot be extracted by simply using degree of nodes. And then uh, lastly, uh, we compared the proposed method with one of the most popular existing uh, method, S-core decomposition or which is also called k-core decomposition. Um, S-core decomposition is a method for extracting network codes similar to our method, but this method is, uh, purely, depend is purely dependent on degree of noise. So in this method, uh, we cannot consider, uh, we do not use, uh, Oh, sorry, we cannot consider bidirectionality of connections. And this actually, this method is uh, 
we often use for analyzing brain networks, and we compare this popular method with our method complexes. And here is the comparison, result of the comparison. And uh, we can define corners also for SCAR decomposition. And so we compared the result using corners values. And again, we can see that the corners when bidirectionality is considered is very weakly correlated with corners for S-core decomposition. So some, so you can see really the points are very scattered. Uh, in contrast, uh, the corners when bidirectionality is ignored and corners for S square decomposition are almost identical. We can see that the corners values for, you uh, can see that the points are almost on the identity line. So this reflects the fact that uh, the in the S core decomposition, we cannot consider bidirectionality. And also, uh, we omit the detail, but we, we can theoretically show that there's uh, some relation, theoretical relation between a scar decomposition and um, complexes when bidirectionality is ignored. So, in this case, uh, anyway, um, we can see that by using a scar decomposition, we cannot see the structure that we can see by using complexes when bidirectionality is considered. So this means that in the mass connectom case, um, we cannot, the corresponding difference between core structure and consciousness cannot be found by using a squat composition. Okay, here's a summary of talk and we propose a novel method for extracting network cores, which is called complex. complex. Um, that consists of bidirectional connections. And we apply the method to a whole brain mass connectome. And the cores with the strongest bidirectional connections consist of regions presumably essential to consciousness, for, such as isocortical and ceramic regions and the classroom, and do not include regions presumably relevant to consciousness, for example, cerebellum. And contrarily, we could not find such correspondence between the cores and consciousness when, the apply, when we apply the other simple method, which ignored by the dictionary. Um, finally, let me show you uh, brain regions, specific brain region names that compose uh, complexes. Um, This one. Maybe it's a bit small, but uh, in, in this um, table, the brain areas are sorted, sorted in ascending order of coalesce values. And here's a top uh, from the top to uh, maybe uh, these are maybe about 100 top areas with. Uh, brain areas with 100 top brain region areas. So you can see that uh, specific name of brain region. So, okay, anyway, uh, so this is a final figure of this talk. So thank you for your attention. <laughs>